another lazy video, but then I have a lot to do, so at least this way I can keep my channel alive more, I suppose. And this video is mostly not about the TSR thing, but it kind of is tangentially. But first, go and subscribe to T-Shirted Historian. If you just go and search for that, you'll find it as part of a way to keep my online presence, uh, video and audio wise alive. I've been doing podcasts, things with him. Uh, we do dungeons and discussions in the week. And at the end of the week, it's a sort of pop culture recap thing with a panel of guests. And uh, I think we have fun. I think his channel, which has just tipped over 100, could do with a boost. And I know there's over 4,000 of you out there right now. So go and subscribe to T-Shirt Historian. He's like my one super fan, I guess. So he deserves some support. And you can see and hear me on there. So, yeah, that's what you're here for, right? Anyway, I want to talk about principles. And some of this might seem a little self-aggrandizing, but it's one of the few things that I feel secure and proud about is my commitment to principle, imperfect though it might be. And as Rutger Bregman says, don't be ashamed to do good. Come out of the closet about the good things that you do. A friend of mine, T. Smith, I know that's not how you pronounce her name, but I think T. Smith sounds awesome, like a medieval barista or something. She wished that people would come out about how hard it is to stick by principle, the cost that you pay socially and financially and, and otherwise for going with principle rather than tribal factionalism. So I want to talk about that for her sake. And also, as usual, you know, I like to be sparked off of current events to talk about something deeper or more general, right? I've always been pretty contrarian and I've always placed principle pretty high up. I think that's a good thing most of the time, but it does put your odds with people who don't necessarily operate on principle, who don't apply their principles universally. This is why hypocrisy bothers me so much, even though it shouldn't because hypocrites are at least trying to do the right thing and failing, right? But principle does come at a cost, and it is perhaps unfair to people not to make it so obvious that it comes at a cost. And like I say, I, I, I have always been like this. There's a story I think I've told before on the channel, but not for some time, probably years. An example of how I've always been like this. Um, going all the way back to primary school. So we had a teacher. Uh, I think this was when we were nine and ten. I think her name was Mrs. Wyadelli. She was kind of like a Roald Dahl teacher character. She had a glass eye and she was quite mean. And, um, yeah, it's a kind of larger than life cartoon villain of a teacher. Um, several of my teachers were like that, <laughs> in fact. But she was a strict disciplinarian. And I recall one day when we were due to do sort of arts and crafts all afternoon, she gave us all this big speech about how we had to be quiet and calm and not move around the room, and we should stick with our assigned groups, and we shouldn't take someone else's chair, you know, all before we were allowed to touch the poster paints and, and the newspaper at all. After a little while of doing arts and crafts, I left the room to use the toilet. And when I returned, Mrs. Wyadelli had taken my chair and moved it across the room and was using it while remonstrating with another group to be less rowdy. So even to my prepubescent, undeveloped little mind, this was obviously a case of a great injustice, of hypocrisy. And so I told her off. 
<laughs> I told her off for doing the opposite of what she said and got in a, a great deal of trouble uh, because of it. I think I was later shown to be correct because later she broke a kid's arm dragging him to see the head teacher and left under a bit of a cloud. So, yeah, I think uh, I think as usual, I was right there <laughs> to see that something was up. Much later on, when I was in college, I was struggling a bit after my uh, parents' divorce. Um, but I passed up the opportunity for therapy to ensure that my mum and my younger brother got it because I thought I was coping, but they weren't coping necessarily so well. Going back again, this time to secondary school, I was there during the satanic panic. And we had a few teachers who were disapproving, fortunately a few teachers who were approving, but I went out of my way to get involved any time slagging off of games or heavy metal music or anything else came up, you know, and that came at a certain amount of cost in terms of suspicion and detentions, <laughs> not to mention bullying and, and everything else that you normally get for being a nerd. Moving forward again, I got involved in Gamergate. Why? Because the things people were saying about it weren't correct and there was a real problem, not dissimilar to that of the satanic panic, but with a bit of an additional media corruption on top. And that was when the real costs began to pile up, even though it wasn't exactly my first rodeo in terms of people trying to cancel me. What was disappointing about that so much was that so many people who should have known better just went along with the narrative. They didn't bother to look into it. They didn't listen to me, their friend, when I was trying to correct them on what was actually going on. And that sense of disconnection and disappointment in the community, in the industry, contributed to yeah, a suicidal episode. That can be the cost. That can be the extreme cost of standing up for principle when you realise that you're surrounded by people who aren't principled, who don't care what is true, who don't apply their principles evenly, who fought tooth and nail in the past against censorship or corruption or moral panics, but suddenly give in to one and start treating you like the devil because you point out that they're wrong. I mean, that is hugely disappointing. During the Trump era, I remonstrated with people who tried to claim that Trump was a fascist because he wasn't. I'm principled, I believe, in an accurate use of political terminology, a meaningful and universal application of political terminology. This wasn't to say that Trump wasn't bad, just that he wasn't Hitler, right? And that people who followed him, who voted for him, weren't necessarily bad people and that we shouldn't lie about them or misrepresent them or throw labels that are so serious, like fascist, at them without genuinely good cause. And most of the time, people didn't have genuinely good cause outside of people like Richard Spencer or, or whatever. And as a result of that, just standing up for principle, the idea that you shouldn't lie about people to attack them, because you wouldn't like to be lied about, would you? You know, that led to an enormous amount of blowback, accusations of being right wing, which is absurd, or of supporting Trump, equally absurd for geographical as well as ideological reasons. But there's a cost there. More disappointment in people who should have known better. And so I guess we arrive at the TSR thing. Now, similarly, I don't agree with them on various things. I think they are a, a suspect looking company. The business side looks dodgy, but they're not being attacked for the things that are real and true and have evidence behind them. They're being attacked for things they haven't done or said. And so defending them again on principle again comes at a cost and disappointment in people 
people who've seen how I've been lied about, reframed, gaslit, accused of all sorts of horrible things, and should know better, and should know better from the history of the hobby, but they go along with this out of, I don't know why, stupidity, willful ignorance, fear of the mob, because they genuinely have the wrong end of the stick, which is easy enough when people lie consistently and constantly about someone. I don't know, but it's disappointing to see it all happen again. To see people be unprincipled, not even bother to look for evidence of actual wrongdoing, that they were actually transphobic in any way, shape or form, and they just go along with it. It's disappointing, especially when they've seen it happen to me and they know me, and they should know better. You don't have to agree with or endorse someone to take umbrage when something unjust happens. And it doesn't matter who or what or how awful that person is, right? We should be cautious about such horrible, meaningful and damaging accusations like transphobia, like racism. Yeah, these accusations shouldn't be taken lightly. We shouldn't just call someone a fascist unless we can demonstrate that they're a fascist. And at the end of the day, when all's said and done, when everything else is stripped away, the only person you have to be able to live with is yourself. I think the only way you can really look your reflection in the eye is if you stand by principle if you don't compromise those things but too many people seem to and even worse it doesn't seem to bother them when they do saying <laughs>